this may seem kind of absurd to some people, but uh, I've had a paranoia for a long time that I... that I'm like a little kid. And it's why when someone, you know, basically says that I'm like a child, it, it really hurts. You know, besides the rape scenario when I was eight for a year, church I had went to, Sunday school, I should say, to, you know, after I came out of the closet at 17, um, you know, the, so many of the people that I had been with, their main thing was liking being with people that look really young. They liked those that looked like they were young teenagers. I look like uh, I was 14 until I was around, I don't know, 25 or 26. And many of the guys that I had been with in my early 20s, you know, the only reason why they were interested in me is because I looked that young. I'd always had a hard time just just relating with people, I, I, you know, the whole being very disconnected. Probably a lot of it has to do with the autism. Uh, really, it was rough, and I was always filled with panic and fear and anxiety. And the guys that I had been with, that, that, that I was with when I was in my early 20s, you know, when I reached my late 20s, I would try to contact them, and they wanted nothing to do with me at all. Found out in uh, that, that's either it was 2003 or 2004, uh, one of the guys that I had been with when I was in my early 20s uh, is in prison because they molested a 14-year-old. Um, you know, and during the time that I, you know, was in the gay community, you know, at, very active in the gay community when I was in my 20s, you know, everything was about, oh, uh, you're so great because, you know, because you're, you look so young. Oh, that's such a great thing. wanted to get involved in the bear community, but I never, no one was interested in me in, in, until I, you know, reached some, some point in my 30s, probably, uh, probably 32 or something like that, when uh, I finally, uh, you know, wasn't just looked at as a twink, you know. And when I was 17, I, I had, uh, I wanted to get some sort of support in some way, so I went to this uh, youth group called Oasis here in Tacoma. And I think I was involved in that until I was, how many years was that? I, I mean, I, I, yeah, probably about five years. It was, uh, uh started going there in 1990 it was probably 94 95 when I you know they didn't go to it anymore but on a constant basis it was this uh, cram down our throats the whole uh, 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 it was like a, a safe sex seminar almost every fucking meeting you know 
And yeah, that's important, but it 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 kind of made me paranoid about sex. And I got this thing where, you know, if... I'll explain that in a little bit. Um, and in my early 20s, I had, I had tried to get more involved in the BDSM uh, community because I had so many of these... this anxiety revolving around sex. And, you know, a lot of that would help me get past that, you know? My, my mind... I, I would have so much other things that are in front of me, so much more stimuli, stimulus, stimuli, <laughs> that, you know, I wouldn't have a chance to focus on being worried, paranoid, uh, anxious, <clears throat> and it would help. By the time I reached my early 30s, there are so many people that I knew, they're telling me, no, you shouldn't be involved in that BDSM thing because it's going, it's going to just hurt you emotionally and mentally. And I just sort of believed them and just kind of, you know. <laughs> um... And I was in a relationship from 2004 to 2006. It, it was a pretty good relationship, except, you know, he would regularly come home several times a week with statements like, I just sucked off 20 guys. And I'm like, oh, okay, that makes me feel really good, I guess. And then near the end, uh, last uh, couple months, uh, he brought a third person into the relationship who was very abusive and uh, the, the day after uh, the, the night that I uh, got the guy to come seven times in an hour he, uh, I was just going to go to hug him and he tells me no, don't touch me it would be like inappropriately touching a small child. And then he starts cramming N.A. down my throat because he didn't like the fact that I did weed. And things really spiral down from there. Um... But, uh, anything that reminds me of a clinical view of sex, makes me unable to enjoy it. I don't like bathhouses because it's just like, well, this is the designated place for you to have sex. It's designated. Here, look at all the posters all over all the walls with, with, with drag queens on them saying, better practice safe sex kind of stuff, you know. <laughs> and I'll see that, and I think, and it makes me think of Oasis, how that would be crammed down our throats all the time. And, uh, yeah, forget it. <laughs> you know? I can't stand water-based lubes. I can't stand the, uh, uh, I mean, it's a little bit better, but I, I, I still don't like the silicone-based lubes. Um, it's just always like, uh, uh, here, put the, the this chemical concoction product on your body. You know, it might as well be hair gel or something, you know. Here you go. Designated. <laughs> you know, it just... The more that the, uh, the, the animalistic part of sex gets taken away, the, 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 it's just, it makes it not 
very possible. And uh, because of those worries, every time that I end up being with someone, doing things beyond just cuddling, kissing, spooning, massaging, when it goes anything beyond that, then I feel bad about myself for several days afterwards because, oh, well, you're just a little kid. And I know there's parts of me that are still disconnected. But, uh... I don't know. So... You know, I guess... Hey. And my mother still does this thing where she says, uh, uh, basically, she would do something awful. She did this just this last week. She'd do something awful if I ever start to act really feminine and if ever I act queenie. She still has that going on. It's really disappointing. But I'm thankful for, to be able to help my mother out. I'm thankful that I have disability income, that I can pay rent. Um, God, I keep thinking about the, the NA thing. The, you know, after I left that relationship, it wasn't even a month later, right? It didn't even last a month with that abusive guy. Uh, it was in 2006. Uh, for about two years, I was still trying to do the NA thing. It took five years after that to finally recover from it. And, and, and it was August 13th, 2013 at 8.50 p.m. that I finally got past that. You can watch the video from that period, right? When the change, you know... 10 minutes after the change. Um, took that long to recover from recovery. <laughs> Damn cult. Religious psychobabble bullshit cult that NA is. And then... Last year, I'm living with Tyler and the three meth addicts. I've, I've, I've barely had any time where I've lived completely alone. Barely at all. There are the disadvantages to living at my mother's, but uh, compared to the disadvantages to living at Tyler and the Three Bears, where I had literally no privacy, I didn't even have my own room. Uh, and then they absorb most of my stuff. Go there with, you know, at least a decent amount of clothing, and I leave there with, you know, a couple pairs of pants, maybe three shirts. Most of my computer cords were gone, all that stuff, you know. And I tried to move to... Tried to figure out if there's a way to go to Bellingham and live there. And, uh... The low-income apartments had this thing of, uh... Well, no, we you, you can't uh, get an apartment here because 
we need at least two years of uh, receipts for you staying at a, a, an apartment. So if you're staying with, with family, and you're, even if you're paying rent, that doesn't matter. It has to be an official apartment. Or, you know, you can't get an apartment. And, uh, and then I got help from my friend Tony, a lot of financial help, and went to down to California, lived in Eureka, less than a month. And learned that I was unprepared. I made a lot of stupid decisions. I went through most of the... I went through all the money that I was given to for, for help. I, uh... Didn't, I mean... All I was able to pay attention to when I was down there initially was, you know, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm away from from this crap. I I, I have my own place. But then all the stuff that uh, was in Eureka started to catch up. The crazy lady in the back, the crazy meth lady in the back, who'd bring people over, and say, I'm gonna bash a fucking faggot and. Uh, The black mold, the fact that I wouldn't be able to, I, my computer never quite arrived in time for me to use it, and I wouldn't have been able to use it anyway, because the power would have just went out if I tried. The power was so shitty there. And then I, you know, came to find out the reason why there were so many of the kind of rough-looking but friendly characters there is because, uh, Probably about 85% of the people that I would see as I'm walking down the street were homeless. Learning there was no music scene there. Learning just what I had gotten myself into. Learning that when I didn't have transportation in a, in a city that has a shitty bus system that uh, I would go through money like crazy and I'd never be able to survive. And then learning what it's like to live somewhere that I know nobody and trying to make the best of that and try to really assert myself and And then I found out that my mother had uh, took all of my childhood tapes and took all my VCR tapes that had my masters of my music. I find this out on the phone from my brother. She had taken all those to the dump. Those are my only physical things left showing any good memories of my childhood. And then I had the, uh, the epiphany where I was able to forgive everyone who had ever done me wrong. My mother, my abusive grandmother, Clay, the abusive person that was in the uh, relationship that I was in from 2004 to 2006, the person who came in at the end. Uh, just anyone who had done me wrong, I was able to forgive in my head. And then my mother came and picked me back, picked me up all the way down there in, in Eureka. She wanted to go on a long trip anyway, so it, it worked out for her. She enjoyed the trip. I, I, the reason I had realized that my mother was not doing well mentally, which is why she did she threw out that stuff of mine. She wasn't really getting help from my brother, if anything. So But uh <sighs> 
now I am looking forward to us trying to... Some of the plan is to make this house at least sellable. And when she's able to sell the house, she... Is, we're, we're considering trying to do something where uh, maybe we'd end up just being on, at a trailer court somewhere. And she gets her trailer, I get my trailer. Uh, I'm still able to help her out in the areas that I need, and yet I have totally my own space. She wants to get a different vehicle, so I, she would give me her old vehicle. Um, you know, ever since 2013, when I gave my brother my truck because he needed it more than I did, because I would have my mother's vehicle that I could drive once, you know, when I needed it, and he didn't have anything, so I gave my truck to him. But anyway, uh, you know, there, there's, there's hope for that sort of thing. But as I've been staying here, though, it's like... I've, I've let my mother's judgments get to me quite a bit. The way I look, the way that I act things I find important, lots of judgments. It's one of the reasons why it was such a difficult thing when I ended up having to cut this off because of the allergies to the dye. And for a while, I was start. I, I I had stopped wearing the short shirts, and then uh, this last weekend, when I went to visit uh, Kevin in uh, Bellingham, it, it showed me again, you know, what I had allowed myself to become. The, the idea that I had I was starting to let myself be manipulated into being what my mother wanted instead of just being myself and trying to help my mother as much as I can and uh, it's just been a little bit of a struggle And YouTube used to be what I would use to, as, as therapy. YouTube was my therapy. And it became more so when they, they, you know, combined Google Plus with YouTube. <clears throat> and now that they've taken that away, it was just a huge blow to me using YouTube as therapy. It just really really fucked with that pretty bad and I'm at a point now where I'm just like you know I need to actually go see a real therapist I think I get tired of these feelings so often where it's like I feel like I'm some little kid It's why Paranor's statements about me cut me to the bone. Paranor 001 statements. He, I, I don't know if he has any idea how much those things that he said hurt me. I, I really don't know if he realizes how bad that hurts. And I know it's somebody that's online. And I shouldn't feel this way over someone that's online. But when people try to say that, you know, oh, online friendships are meaningless. Oh, fuck you.
The only thing that makes them meaningless is that there are some people who, who some people who don't value them, and think that just dumping someone willy nilly or just over a disagreement on something is, is you know, people who think that that's just fine, but they wouldn't do this to their real life friends, you know. I considered Paranor a friend. I did. I considered him a friend. I thought he was a friend. Then there's the Dan situation, who was a real life friend. He was turned. He was turning into. A, I was considering him my best friend. And then he dumped me over the. He he just ended friendship with me over the damn minions video. You know, and I'd have been finding myself scared to, you know, I, I get a bunch of, of people, you know, wanting to meet me through, through Growler and some other apps, and they want to meet me, and I chicken out. So I figure, well, why would they want to know me? I'm just some little kid. And I might say something that's just, they're going to just not want anything to do with me because I said the wrong phrase, I looked the wrong way, I did the wrong thing. And I don't want to go back into what I was, you know, before August of 2013. You know, before that, I, it used to be this thing where I would constantly have these lists I, in my head. Every person I'd meet would be these huge lists. Part of the autistic side of things, you know, these huge lists of what not to do. Don't move your hand this way. Don't, when you say this word, don't be in this position. Don't, all these impossible, these things that are just almost impossible to remember and just this, these huge lists. And every time, you, every time I would come up to someone that was, you know, they have this mindset, oh, there's this, this, this list because this is typical of someone who has this mindset, don't do these things. And so I'd get in a room full of a bunch of people and it was like, you know, it would end up being potentially a million things of stuff not to do. I, don't, I do not want to go back to that again. No way. That was a miserable way to live. So... There's all my brother's shit that's been happening. He's in the process of moving out of here. So at least my mother and I can live in somewhat peace. But it's taking forever. It seems like it's going to take him a, a week to, to get his shit out of here. There's all this stuff that he's supposedly done, you know, yesterday and today... And we go in there, and it's like, oh, well, yeah, I, almost everything is still here, but, you know, I, I categorized it differently. But he doesn't want any help from any of us. He'll get help from his friend. No, we can't possibly help him. No, 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 we, no. Because there's some conspiracy of some sort, you know. Anyway, um, this feels kind of good to have gotten this out, and uh, hopefully, hopefully I can get some sort of therapist. Though, you know, it's it's. What worries me about therapists is, you know, am I going to run into one of these people who is, uh, who is basically really religious? You know, it, am, am I, if I look into the background, am I going to find, you know, all these names of places and then faith somewhere in there? Um, you know, is there going to be this religious judgment going on? been one of the main things that stopped me from 
getting involved, it, try, trying to get a therapist in the first place. I just, I don't want this religious judgment bullshit. I don't want someone who comes from a religious background and what the, who, what is going on in, in this? Jesus Christ. Um... Uh, what I was going on, what I was saying that about is the all the the bring, bring, bring. some hangout that's ended and it's, there's just a bunch of bullshit being said. So, um, but no, I I don't. So I just turned off the sound. Uh, I just don't want religious bullshit crammed down my throat. I I don't want it. <clears throat> Then I'd like to be able to get someone that can uh, deal with sexual issues and but uh, it's kind of uh, I, I, I have doubts that I'll be able to find that on <clears throat> Medicare and Medicaid. They'll probably want something else. I don't even know what, what I'm able to get when I'm on Medicare and Medicaid with this. I've got a lot of research to do. So. And, you know, I'm, I... Those of you who that have watched this to, to the end of this video, you know, thank you. You, 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 have, you have a lot of patience. Um, this is definitely one of my most personal videos I've made, so.